All right, thank you for joining today. Could you give us a brief introduction of yourself and your experience in the financial field? Yes, uh, my name is Carolyn Kerr, and I am a chief financial officer, and I have been a controller chief financial officer for the last 15 plus years. Graduated with a business economics degree from UC Santa Barbara and a minor degree in accounting. And I've had the opportunity to also be a controller for a mortgage company as well as other facilities and have helped staff with credit counseling. Can you explain to us kind of the scale on which credit score is based on? What, what constitutes a poor credit score versus a high credit score, for example? Most of the scale, and I believe it goes lower than 400, but I'm, uh, when it comes to a good credit score, anything they're considered 645 or above a good credit score, it, meaning you can get an, a mortgage with that. The scale goes lower, and it really it's pretty recoverable from 5 to 645. You can get your credit score up. It goes, I believe, to 800. Possibly higher, possibly lower, but really you want to, you're looking at people in the 500 to 750 range when you're looking at loans and wanting to buy a house, wanting to buy a car, wanting to do those kinds of things. Okay. Can you explain to me some of the benefits that the credit score system offers? Well, the benefits are um, when you have credit, you can walk into an automobile dealership and, and purchase a vehicle and you can purchase it there or you can go to your credit union get a better rate take that rate to the auto dealership because you've already got your credit established and then they have to give you a lower rate in order to get your business that way or you have the pre-qualification and the, those are the positives about having a credit score because now you have a, a track record right right that people can track mm-hmm that they can compare to the standardized system to kind of build efficiency in these section, right? Right, so it's, it's buying power, right, mm-hmm. is your credit score. Okay. How people in, in the industries view your credit score and the, goods and ba- the good part of it and the bad part of it and what it does for you basically is just buying power, okay? It's buying power for everything in your life. And... Even if you pay cash, cash, cash for everything, there's always gonna become a point where the, where you say you you finally got a house 10 years later and, and you paid cash for it. Maybe it's just a one bedroom or something. Well, even if you wanna go further, you wanna buy a business or start something or you need cash for um, some kind of a medical procedure or something and you don't have it. So now this person who's bought paid everything with cash and maybe he has something he's going to have to mortgage it utilize credit to to help with this other thing that he needs in his life so it's really a fallacy to think that you can live your life just paying for cash with cash that that doesn't happen and that that's really not realistic is it a great thing if you can do mostly yeah but everything in life is about partial right right I can nothing in too much excess right you have to just be moderation and that's what banks that's what all all institutions use a credit score for and for hiring and it's a standardized way of seeing how responsible somebody is with their finances in all respects of finances right and so I'm a proponent of it. I believe in it because it does show, like, a, you know, a grading scale right. for a college paper. You know, it, it shows you where you are in, in a position, in a financial position. Right. And a responsibleness. Right, even uh, for when companies look to hire, one of the things to consider in such background checks is the credit scores. They're looking for the same thing, correct? Right. Because a higher credit score shows that you have a responsibleness to how you handle your finances. So if you're going for a high-level CFO controller position in a in a business, which I've been in the past 15 years with my degree and accounting, um, have been. So 
you know, if you have a low credit score that shows you haven't handled your personal finances correctly, how is a company supposed to trust you to handle their corporate finances? Right. So, yes, it is imperative on high level accounting, finance, right. It's, types, it's those a types statistical of ratio to show how more likely you are to be responsible, not the end right. all be all of your character, just a guideline for them to evaluate. Right. And it's important to recognize that mm-hmm. it's one of like maybe 15 measures that are utilized when a, using a hiring uh, format. You know, you, a background check doesn't just include your credit score. That makes sense. And then can you explain some um, of the factors that maybe go into that people don't commonly recognize um, have an effect on their credit score? Some of the factors where... That they may not recognize as um, either goes on their record and their report or um, certain pitfalls people can fall into unwittingly. Yeah, I mean, with your credit, with your credit score, building your credit score is just like building any other thing in your life. It's step by step. But some of some of the pitfalls are if you buy if you get a credit card and you think you're making your minimum payment, and so your credit is going good and you're building credit and you're really not what happens is the way credit is really viewed in the banking world we'll just use that world for now is that they want to see you be responsible for the amount of money that you are given they want to see that you are able to have a certain amount say a five thousand dollar credit limit on a credit card they it it's viewed as if they want to see you be able to manage that $5,000, have it available to you, it's spending power, but having the self-control and the responsibleness to utilize it correctly. Maybe buy something, pay it down, and, and buy something else, get lower, always making a little bit more than your minimum payment, and and then sometimes paying it off or being able to carry a balance that's a minimal balance of maybe a thousand dollars reasonably and then paying it off that shows that you can manage five thousand dollars available to you and always making more than your minimum that's how you build your credit and then your credit score will start rising if however you go out and you spend four hundred and ninety five thousand dollars right then you're not, you're at your max. You don't have, you've used all your spending power. You're making a minimum payment. That's showing that you're not, you're not ever gonna be able to pay it down. We don't wanna loan you more money. First of all, show us you can pay that down and most people can't by the time you get it up because now you have an interest rate that's almost what you're paying a month. And then if you fall in hard times, that's the first thing you don't pay all the banking institutions look at that all of those little aspects of carrying a credit card banks want to see that you can have money available to you and you'll spend it responsibly and you'll also have the self-control not to overspend to a point where you're only making a minimum payment for a year because if if you have a 24 dollars a month payment You know, $19 Mm -hmm. of that is going to interest and, you know, $5 is going to paying down your $1,000 balance. Right. So after you measure how much, you'll never get anywhere. Right. They they don't want to see you get to the point where you can only make the minimum payment. Right. To where you can't, there is no possibility of you paying anything else on top of your other bills kind of a deal. Well, and that's how they hook you in. Okay, well, you get a $5,000 limit. Your minimum payment will go up as high the higher you go, but so maybe you owe $75 a month now. Okay, I can't use that $5,000. I've already spent it. I bought a new couch. I bought a refrigerator. I've really enjoyed everything. Now I have all this stuff. I'll just pay $75 a month now and just enjoy my stuff. And then I'll go get another credit card, run that up. Pretty soon people have $20,000 worth of debt 
you know. Mm-hmm. And then they have, is there is there any they way have to four seventy five dollar a month payments, which ends up being three hundred dollars a month. Now that's getting more substantial. So now they can't put more money towards it, and most of that's going to interest. Mm-hmm. So how how do you that how do you get out of debt? But you have all this stuff, so you're just going to make your minimum payments. And that's and your credit score will actually go down. Yeah. Yeah. And they will actually credit cards actually believe it or not they will stop they will stop you from getting any more credit and then as you pay it down they'll start lowering your limit and they'll go down with you if they feel you're at risk of not paying them back. Really? And then is it is it possible to then pay off a credit card and then close that account and then focus on the other ones would that help? Okay, so that's another fallacy, right? Closing accounts actually do hurt your credit score. Really? Can you explain why that is? Okay, so it goes all the way back to the theory of having money available to you and not utilizing it, right? So the person... So if you pay off a credit card, say you have a Target card, you paid down that 5000 then you need to take that card, put it in a safe, lock it up in a drawer somewhere and let it just sit there. It has no, you know, no charges, no nothing and let it just sit there for a while. That's how you build credit. And then while you're paying down the next credit card, because now you're showing the banks that you're responsible with your money, you have $5,000 available to you and you have some self-control, you haven't gone out and used that. Okay, so now your credit score is going to start going up. Mm -hmm. But if you close it, you pay it off and you close it, then that can actually, too many of those can cause your credit score to go down because now they're thinking they don't have any self-control. They're trying to control themselves. You know, I mean, they might be thinking something else and have a better way of putting that, but that's really the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, it's about showing reasonableness when it comes to managing your money, your revenue, the the cash available to you to spend. Okay, so if you purchase some cards or go to some department stores, get some $1,000 limit cards, put them in a drawer and don't utilize them, that can actually help your credit. Wow. But if you were to go and close all five of those accounts right away, that'll really hurt your credit. Mm -hmm. So people don't realize those kinds of things. So you you want to be careful. I mean, certainly closing something now and then, there's nothing wrong with that. Paying something off. But when it comes to credit cards, you have to be careful with that. Paying off a vehicle is a different type of loan. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's five years, you need to pay it off, and you need to pay it off on time. They want to see you the, the reasonable measures you take to manage your finances. Right, it's the difference of having um, basically a credit card loan um, that you have access to funds and not using it versus you're giving these funds to pay for a fee in advance, and now you have to pay back that fee. Right, right. well, if you're buying, if you're buying an asset, right. a vehicle... An asset. Okay. So mm-hmm. your vehicle is, is now something that that they consider worth the money mm-hmm. you're paying when you first drive it off. Well, we know that, that that goes down quite a bit. <laughs> depreciates. It depreciates. Unfortunately. Uh, uh, quite a bit. But eventually you get to a point if you drive it long enough to where it's, it's reasonable. But still, that's, that's something with an asset. Now, a credit card doesn't have anything backing it. So they view that differently. Mm-hmm. And you most people think it's the same, but it's not. An auto loan, you're paying for the vehicle. I mean, some people, if you're getting a car accident, it gets totaled and you had insurance. Maybe you've quit paying your insurance for a couple of times and no one knew. Now you don't have any way to pay that off. That's going to go on your credit report. There is a ways, always. There's always a program that you can go to, that you can have, if you lose your job, you have unemployment, you have reasonable time span, you can talk to your mortgage company and let them know. Uh, some companies will work with you if you've been a good payer for many years and you have a certain circumstances, 
they'll add a couple of payments onto the back of the loan. So you still own the money, but give you a grace period to get another job. Or there's, it's work, but there's always something that can help you through a bad speed bump in your financial situation. Okay, can you explain like the first step towards towards fixing that or the recovery of the credit then? So if you have bad credit, say you have an auto loan you didn't pay or you, you know, you went and dropped off the car and thought, oh, well, that's enough and they're going to take it back. No. Whether you dropped the car off or not, you owed the money, period. So you need to, um, on that, you need to find a way to go either refinance it, ask for a lower payment, pay just as much as you can, and continue paying it and driving your vehicle. Being a chief financial officer of a medical facility, I have, a, you know, there's, there's some things that really cause problems for people on their credit, and that is medical debt. You know, you don't have insurance, you have a, a procedure that needs to be done. So now you're a young kid, 19, 20 years old, with, with a, a broken arm or actually needing pins in your arm or something, and $20,000 in debt to medical and maybe not working. So what you need to do though is communicate. You need to walk in to your facility, to the medical facility and say, I have this bill, I don't, I don't have a job, or I have a job, I can only pay $20 a month towards it. Whatever you do, there are programs and people who will work with you. So you can go in and say, now yes, there are those that deny you, but then you can, those that do. And we did, as long as you were making a medical payment, even if it was $40 a month, and that was all you could, you proven that you could make, then it never went to your credit score. It never went to your credit report. If you stopped paying, if you stop paying and don't pay at all, then it goes on your credit report. And honestly, once it hits your credit report, I mean, it's so hard to get it off. So, so then it, you can potentially get it removed though after seven years. How would you go about yes. doing that? You can get it removed. You can get it removed if you pay it off, and they say that, and they write a letter that the, the uh, you have to actually physically though usually go to the medical facility, get the letter that you paid it off. So don't ever pay something off in cash and get no receipt. Even though, because what if they forget to apply that payment? What if they, you know, you don't have anything to, to show for it? That's why people used to use checks, because now you have a check that shows for what you paid for. Right, so there's you, a, there's a record cash, that can be checked, so if, if sure it does get, get lost in the, uh, and in the jumble. The receipt. Because now, what if there's a mistake made and no one records it correctly but if you have the receipts you can say nope here's my receipts here I paid for it I need a letter stating that I paid this in full you right. take that letter you have to certify get it to the each credit agency and then they have a process to which they take it review and make sure that they contact the facility and then they take it off right. and it takes a while it, ta it could take a year or two you have to do all the steps. But yeah, you can remove stuff, but that's the way you do it. Okay, so then in summary, you're saying that like, after the seven years, they're supposed to remove it, but if, and if you just, you pay it off before that, you still have to, basically you have to communicate and make sure for your own safety in your experience, um, just to make sure that your case isn't lost in the, the jumble that is all of their accounts everywhere throughout the nation, basically. Just to make sure um, that you put in the pro the work to fulfill your end of the process and make sure that you monitor getting a receipt basically from them saying they did theirs. Yes, and and a lot of a lot of facilities will be dedicated to it, make sure they notify the credit agency, but it's your job to go and get your credit report once a year and look at it and right. ask for No one no one cares one. about that as much as you would, right? Right. And and it's just your job. I mean, some people, it's enough just to see their credit score go higher. And then they can purchase a car, purchase a house, and do all those things. 
If, if that's good enough, that's fine. But if you really want to monitor and increase your credit score, you'll, you'll have to communicate with the agencies and make sure that, that you see what's on there and what shouldn't be on there. Because you could have equipment from a satellite company that you never returned to HughesNet on there for $100 and that could be lowering your score and keeping you from buying a vehicle. When you can just go pay the $100, HughesNet notify the, the you kind of make yours. sure that HughesNet did it. And now that's off your record, your credit score goes up. Now you can buy that auto on the bill. So there are, there are times when it's just a small amount and it's worth reviewing once a year. Mm -hmm. Is, um then is it if you if you have a really great credit score and something like this does unfortunately happen and you and it hits your credit score report will it automatically tank your credit score no it doesn't it goes down in increments it's never it's not as volatile as the stock market <laughs> you know it's 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 showing your score if you have had a really good credit for 10 years and you're doing better. Student loans, one way to build great credit because it's, an, it's a good amount of money that's being set aside and utilized for your education and you don't have to start paying it back right away when you don't have any income. So you're not getting any late payments, nothing bad showing up on your credit. But what is showing on your credit is that you have a loan of this amount of money, but you don't have any bad things happening. So then when you're out of school, you start making your loan payments on time and you start trying to pay down more than your loan payment. And then you, pretty soon you start paying it off. Once you get your loans paid off, your credit score will go up tremendously. I mean, jump leaps and bounds. Now you can buy a house, you can buy almost anything. I mean, you, be, you really hit the credit world once you start paying off big things like that stuff that has sat or you've used and then you go back and use even though it doesn't have a asset behind it so that's like a paying off a credit card right most people graduate they get their degree and they think they could just go forward without paying it off well they'll just live with the bad debt right and you can't that's one of the things you can never remove correct you right student loan and and tax debt uh -huh. are two of the ones that you can that never fall off your credit and people don't realize that so they think well I got my degree what, what matters well what matters now is if you don't pay that it will haunt you for the rest of your life because you cannot forgive it mm -hmm. on your taxes you can forgive a bankruptcy that can fall off your credit in 10 years but again, you still, during that time, you have to do the proper steps, right? Right. You have to have credit cards that you pay down and don't use. You have to, you know, buying an automobile helps to increase your credit because now you're paying a monthly amount for a vehicle and you're doing it on time. That's still, again, it all goes back to showing how you can manage your money in a reasonable manner and not overspend get yourself in a spot where all you can afford is your minimum payments mm -hmm. all you can afford and then you have nothing that you can do to get out of debt you can't sell something to i mean you can't sell a tv to pay off your credit card you know that tv is not worth that anymore mm -hmm. it's an item for you so you have to be really careful what you purchase too right right so you purchase a house it can conceivably go up in value. You can sell it and use that money you made to pay off your credit cards or whatever else. And, mm -hmm. and then your credit gets better and you can go buy something more. Once okay. You, you know. Well, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but to go a little more in depth, um, what are some programs you've encountered that help people who maybe are in rural, more rural communities or impoverished communities or just have lower credit scores? or um, policies that you know of that kind of help these people? Well, Montana, for, for instance, offers um, no money down loans for rural communities and lower income. It, it still, most of Montana is considered rural. 
community Kalispell, um, Libby, you know, these are different ones. But I would, they, in no money down means like maybe a percentage that they'll have to come up with like 2% versus a 10% and allows for more down payment to be rolled into the loan. It's a lower interest rate. If you're a first time buyer and you have somewhat good credit, you know, there's a lot of programs in place like that. And you just have to, again, you have to walk into a bank and you have to ask. And you have to ask for all the programs, not just the ones they think you you, sh you qualify for. You know, veterans have more benefits in some respects. They can, they can also um, see what's offered to them. And also, a lot of people don't realize that um, credit unions, and usually credit unions that are tied to a community, um, that are they are more funded for helping the community that they live in so they're given loans from the government and being able to fund money cheaper so they can offer better deals for lower demographic people so if you live in a for instance libby lincoln county credit union is a credit union that is for the lincoln county area and anyone who lives in Lincoln County can get it if they qualify for a bank account and start that kind of a credit process. They are offered some loans that would help that kind of demographic because they have a less reporting qualifications than a Bank of America would. Right. So they can offer better loans. And people don't realize that. Your credit unions will give you better auto loans and usually help you more because their standard of what they'll take for credit score is lower because they're offered more money to help people with lower credit score. So those those kinds of things are in every kind of community in every kind of across the country. Mm -hmm. They're just help and it's free to you to go in and ask questions. You know? Mm -hmm. So then let's say like um you're someone who doesn't have really any credit score. You've never had a credit card. You don't, you've never paid down your student loans yet. Maybe you're still a student. Is there some policy or program that kind of helps you in this way or gives you a grace period to recover? Well, so first of all, once you start getting loans, then you've got a credit history. How do you start getting loans without a credit history? Well, there... There are, if you have, you know, the standards change. They've changed from when I went to school. But, you know, you can go in and, and apply and qualify. And, and if you had no credit, at least, in the, but you had really, really good grades and you went into, you know, you got scholarships or stuff, you can get financial aid. Then you can start the process. You get a little bit of money. So you then you prove that you can go to school, make good grades, then they offer you more money. So, I mean, sometimes it's a building process, sometimes it's, it's not. Sometimes you need somebody's help, a parent or somebody to co-sign. Okay, then is there, um, for such things like insurance or other major payments that you need throughout your life, but you're just graduating high school or something, is there a way to qualify for those even without a credit score? Yes. And when you are in college and you've got loans or, or you're already going into college, sometimes your university will then offer a $100 credit card to you. So now here's an opportunity for you to start building your credit because now you can go spend $20, pay it off, sometimes spend $50, pay it down, carry a limit the next month of $20. And then in six months, you can ask for $600 and they'll raise your limit. Now you can build credit faster and you still play the same thing. After a year, you can request more. And as your limits grow and you become more responsible, now you've got your credit scores growing with you while you're doing this. You're still going to school. 
you're still gonna getting an education. So when you get out of school, you're still gonna make far more money an hour than someone who isn't. And then you'll be paying that debt on time regularly. Now your credit score is going up and up. That was a very easy way to just build your credit from nothing. Right. Many people think that um, student loans nowadays, especially depending on where you go to school, right, the um, the amount of loans you could take out or have to take out become almost suffocating in a way that you can't ever pay it off. But do you, it sounds like almost like um, you don't necessarily, it comes down to whether you're willing to live with that payment, right? How much you take out as a loan. Is that what you're... Well... Would that be your thoughts on it? Like, because student loans, obviously, you're saying they, they help you build credit. But then if you get to a point where you were just in, like, so much, a hundred plus thousand dollar debt from your college fees, is it still then worth the the bill you get from paying your credit, even if it takes you forever to... Or maybe you'll never pay off that loan? So that's how people get into trouble so there there were loans offered for for people took out student loans and then they didn't use it for school okay or or they played it in the stock market and then it crashed and so they lost ten thousand so the regulations on student loans have become more strict and now you there are a lot more needing of a cosigner to help with the loans even though they're in your name because that way then there's a fallback person should you default Mm -hmm. okay so that that has become a little stricter due to the misuse of student loans people decided to because you can some have good credit and apply and get a lot of loans for living expenses and maybe you buy a car maybe you do something else so there was there are those less regulated loans that have really put people at risk and in a bad situation and then say they lose a job or they didn't get a job or now they haven't worked for 15 years and they've just been a perpetual student and they've also used that money to live on. And so, yeah, there are those who get into trouble because of those poor financial decisions they make. But the, the person or average student that takes out the amount of loans that they need or they work some during their college, it's no no more than buying a Ford F-150 truck for $50,000 and paying it off in six years. So most most students can get out of school in a a good school for $50,000 worth of debt, maybe 60. And that's how much a truck costs and most people can pay that off in six years because they chose to do the dedicated payment of $550 a month for six years and it's done and now the credit goes up the thing is is with student loans they're a lot lower interest rate they're more manageable payment of 150 bucks a month so nobody wants to really look at it as This is a debt I need to pay off. Let me do a loan schedule in Excel or online. Punch in, hey, I have $60,000 worth of debt. How can I pay it off in five years? And then they get a payment and start paying that off. Then they're done. So, yeah, they can stretch out. And then people are like, well, why am I paying for something in 15 years? You're like, I've got a job. I've got a life. I don't need this anymore. And then it goes on their credit, and then they're haunted by it because it can never go off their credit. Until it's paid off. And the IR, and the government does not forgive student loans. Right, because it's government money. So. All right. It's about paying for what you received. Right. So that's very, it's been a very interesting conversation. Of, um, learning about what kind of goes into the calculations of a credit score and how to avoid and amend certain pitfalls you could fall into. And even those programs we discussed that help people with lower credit or ways to quickly recover credit. What would you say, just as a last final question, would be a, um, 
if you were truly dedicated and you communicated as you suggest to all the appropriate people and were dedicated to the process of recovery, how, how long do you think it would take someone to recover or build credit? You know, I've known people to play the system, like go get department store credit cards for a hundred dollars or $500 and even a furniture store here and there and put the money and you put a bunch of cards in a drawer and, and it will, it'll start increasing your credit and that can increase it quickly. Mining your, your pain down everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there is no one way to get it done. There's just all the ways you work towards it. And that's hard to, to imagine, but it, in order to recover quickly is to do that, is to not, to increase the money given to you and not spend it. Will increase your credit score faster than anything else. Auto loans are another key to helping you with your credit score. Okay, right, so then Basically, the, the quickest way would be, like you've been saying all along, to show how responsible you are with it and just not necessarily take on more payments, but gain, gain access to, to various loans or income, or not income, but money you have available that you don't touch and therefore don't have to make it a payment right away, right. but then occasionally spend $20 on it and pay it off that month. Right, and then it... It is important that you use one or two now and then and pay it off. And if you stop using a credit card for a couple of years, they will send you a notice and saying, hey, we're gonna close your account. You haven't used it in a couple of years. And you're just like, okay. So it's okay if some of them close, you just don't want everything to close at once. You don't want right. it. It will drop your credit score 40 points if you will and close three accounts at once wow. and it and you don't realize it but it's a red flag to a credit card company because they're like wow this person can't control themselves mm -hmm. they have to to take away the temptation and really you might just be being like hey i'm going to be good i'm going to get rid of credit cards i'm going to live on cash i'm going to only buy what i make which is a great thing too. There's so many different ways. You don't have to have debt to live. Right. But but it gives you further access to other loan types and more options. You you need credit cards. So even using your debit card in your bank account, you got to remember that that's attached to your bank. It's it's almost a safety net cuz most credit cards you can deny a charge. But if it hits your bank account, it's almost impossible to get that money back. So if you have a credit right, card... Right, such as like um, identity theft versus a credit card right. is much easier because a credit card company will fight for you versus a debit card where right. you have to fight for yourself. There are so much in the identity theft world where, um, and I've known of people where, you know, they'll attach to your bank account right away and start taking out money. But if they don't have the direct route to the bank account via debit card, then they have to hit a credit card, fraudulent charges, Citibank, you can call them and if you've been a good customer, you know, customer and loyal uh, in, in making your payments and everything and say these are fraudulent, then, then they will take them off. Whereas if it's drawn from your bank account, it's gone. So, a good way to build credit, and here's a, a good way, you get a credit card, you have all your bills at the credit card, the electricity, everything else, and then monthly, you transfer enough money to pay that off. Now you're raising your credit card score, and your bank is protected because you're, you're only transferring to the credit card, not to, and you're utilizing the credit card out there for gas, for food, for all these other things, and you would have paid that out of your bank account. You would have paid for food, your gas, and so you know what amount it is, and that amount you go and do with your credit card, then you pay it. The problem is most people won't, because credit cards have a delay in pay. So if it comes out of your bank account right away, you see it, you know it, yes. It takes a little bit more self-control and dedication, but 
again, that's what a banking industry wants to see. That's what a prospective employer of a high level financial position or other high level position wants to see is the responsibility of that higher credit score that you've earned due to your responsible choices. Right. Right. All right. Well, this has all been very enlightening. Thank you for your time. Thank you.